I'm Kathy Murray. Welcome to The Close. We are beginning with the markets today. It's been uh, some wild swings. They've been under pressure since the open, but uh, well off the lows of the day right now with the Dow down by only 52 points. The drivers are both macro as well as micro concerns, but nothing necessarily too new on the macro front. Essentially all of the same culprits. That would be, of course, China's growth slowing down, U.S.-China trade tensions, the EU-Italy budget battle. But it seems as though it's the micro, meaning the earnings results, that really led the market lower at the beginning of the day with the bulk of that heavy selling around that 1030 time period. So take a look at this right now as we watch the Dow climb or try to grind back here a bit. Uh, look at Caterpillar. It's still down 7 percent right now. This is really what sparked the uh, the sell off this morning. But uh, but U.S. markets, as I mentioned, are trying to grind higher. We do have one of the top ranked industrial analysts on the show today. We're going to see if the sell off in Cat as well as some of the other industrial names was actually warranted. The issue there surrounding CAT wasn't so much the uh, earnings results. It's really all about the guidance going forward. Uh, let's also take a look at, though, how this risk-off sentiment might be impacting the TSX today. You are seeing uh, some of the high valuation companies, the cannabis companies, down on the day. There's been quite a bit of selling, but that's been occurring since last week. But that does send uh, the healthcare index down by 0.34%. Interestingly as well, we are seeing uh, energy down by about 2%. Oil is selling off as Saudi promises to increase supply. So let's uh, get a take on the market. For that, we're joined by two guests today. We've got the chief market strategist, Colin Szynski, from SIA Wealth Management at the TSX in Toronto. And we've also got Alan Nuckman from Agora Financial joining us from Chicago. Welcome to you both. I wasn't sure at uh, when, I, so when I saw the markets this morning what we might be talking about at the 3 o'clock hour. Uh, definitely markets trying to grind higher. Alan, let me just start with you. What are you seeing on the floor there? Well, this is the flush out that I was looking for. This is how typically markets make a bottom, as they test their last extreme lows, they test and reject, and that's what we've seen this morning. So we got below the October 11th bottom in the S&P, and now we've U-turned and reversed, and it looks like we're gonna about to go positive. Now, also at the same time, the VIX, the fear factor, did not make new relative highs, did not get to the 29 that it was at on that extreme low back in the uh, beginning of October. So that's some bullish divergence, very positive signs here, and this may be the flush out to, to shake things up when we can move higher from here. And, and Colin, what are you seeing, um, whether it's in the U.S. markets, since of course you cover U.S. as well as uh, the TSX, um, but specifically what kind of action or price action were you seeing on the TSX? Uh, right now, I'm still seeing that there was uh, quite a bit of uh, risk-off sentiment this morning. People are pulling out of risk markets, whether it was stocks, whether it was uh, crude oil and what have you. And, and the most important thing to me was looking at Caterpillar because the earnings were good, the sales were good, and, uh, and then but people were reacting negatively to the guidance. And, and that suggested to me that it, it, to a certain extent, people are still looking for a reason to sell, still looking for a reason to go to the sidelines. Because the U.S. didn't have the big correction that the other markets had earlier in in the in August and September we're still seeing that happen in the case of individual stocks it's happening quite abruptly uh, I, I do agree that at some point over the next couple of weeks we will likely form a, a major low in the uh, in the markets this is an, uh, an October is historically a very volatile and, and rough month from for markets but mid-november through to the end of the year is often positive so I think we're still in a rough ride I think that uh, overall markets may still We'll see some fairly violent swings uh, in both directions. We're still going through an adjustment of expectations process here to me. You know, Colin, when you talk about perhaps finding a little bit of a bottom or a bottom uh, in the markets, I'm wondering though, are you talking about U.S.? Because what about the TSX? Because the TSX still really does look weak um, to your earlier point, Colin, whereas those U.S. markets seem to be grinding higher. It seems as though there's just more buyers of that market. Uh, to me, the issue with the, the TSX is twofold. First of all, the uh, interest rates are rising, and, uh, and that can have a negative knock-on impact for the financial services, utilities, real estate sectors. The interest-sensitive sectors are still a big chunk of the TSX, and probably the biggest chunk of the TSX outside of the two resource sectors. So those are kind of the two pillars. And on the, on the resource side, at least, we've got golden is, is coming back. Copper looks like it's bottoming, so things are looking a little better for the miners, but the energy stocks are still getting hit by the low oil prices in Canada. So I still think we've got a lot to work through here. But, uh, but in 
particular to me, the financial, the financials and, and interest sensitive sectors are still looking weak and that could impact the TSX's ability to recover. Hmm. Um, Alan, when we take a look at the seasonality that you, you brought up, um, that's one of the big question mm -hmm. marks right now is whether or not we're actually going to see the seasonality that we would expect to see in October. In other words, to your point and Colin's point as well, that this is in fact seasonal, a seasonal adjustment. We're bottoming out here and we'll actually have a rally into the year end in the U.S. markets. It doesn't feel like we will when you take a look at the reaction to some of these uh, recent earnings results. Uh, you know, it, it, it is really sell on the news. So what do you think between now and year end? Well, it is only Tuesday. Now, uh, a third of the S&P stocks report uh, this week, so there's still a lot of numbers that are going to come out. And coming into this week, about 20% of S&P companies reported and 80% had beat EPS. So like you said, it's a lot about expectations for the following quarters. Can we continue to do this? This is a 19.5% earnings growth for this quarter. So we're looking at three quarters in a row where we had 20% earnings growth. So that's exceptional. Uh, and that's a fundamental fact that corporations are making a lot of money and doing very, very well. You know, the psychology of these, these ebbs and flows, let's remember it was only a couple weeks we were at all-time highs in the markets. Sentiments change and they'll change quickly once again. One thing to keep an eye on, you know, we're talking Canada, is crude oil, obviously. Uh, here, WTI got down to 66 today, so we got down to the 200-day moving average, had a little bit of a dip here, lowest I think since August. But let's remember, there's been four times so far this year that crude oil's uh, dropped 10%, and each and every time, it's rallied back and made new multi-year highs. So uh, I think this could be an opportunity here in the near term. Let's remember the dollar is actually still down, and the dollar, the U.S. dollar, never made new highs, even though interest rates just a couple weeks ago were at uh, multi-year highs. Well, what does that mean to you then? Well, that means to me that this dollar fear, everybody's fearful about the rate hikes and the dollar moving higher. Mathematically, 70% of the time, rising rates mean rising stocks. So if you look at the period historically over the last 60 some years, there have been 14 periods where rates have been rising. And out of those, nine times, the stock market went up. So I think it's an overblown fear. We're coming from very, very, very low interest rate levels. Uh, so, you know, yes, we're, we're rising, but we're nowhere near where we typically are, especially at this point in the business cycle. Uh, we're still down here at 2% or so here in the U.S. And the fact that the dollar could not make new highs, even though we've raised rates twice in a row and we're going to raise again in December, tells me that it's kind of priced in. If you look further out, we stop raising rates next June. After that, there's no more rate hikes in the system all the way out to 2024, 2025. Okay, and uh, we might have a rate hike here in Canada tomorrow. Colin, what do you think the market uh, is anticipating in terms of the impact that it, that will have on the TSX companies? You, you mentioned it in terms of the financials not perhaps faring very well if in fact this happens. Is all of that being priced in already into the financials or where do you expect some more weakness there? I think the market's generally been expecting that the Bank of Canada would raise rates uh, either at this meeting or the next meeting in December. So uh, at this point, I think a lot of that has already been priced into uh, into Canadian stocks in terms of a rate hike. The, the Bank of Canada has not been quite as, as clockwork regular in raising rates as the Fed has been, but they have been fairly consistent over the course of this year. Now that the uh, the trade negotiations are, are, are out of the way and, uh, and employment had been going well, it, it does look as though the path is clear for them to do a rate hike, uh, as I said, either now or in uh, or in December. Uh, what would be interesting is if they did hold off that, uh, because when most people are expecting it, could actually be seen as a little bit of a negative at this point. So that's something to keep an eye on as we move into tomorrow. Okay. And speaking of tomorrow, we're going to be keeping our eye on a couple of things. Um, one, our further uh, industrial companies are going to be reporting. I want to actually get your both of your take in terms of what what in the world um, did investors really not like about CAD? It looks like as though it's really the guidance. Um, but let's talk about CAT because we've got uh, Illinois Tool Works coming out tomorrow, Packer today, which disappointed investors. And then we've got all the big tech companies reporting on Thursday. So how does this set us up for the next two days of trading? Alan, let me just start with you. Well, it's just a fact, you know, we're going to get our earnings. You can't avoid them. Uh, and I look at them just to kind of support the markets and remind us, uh, you know, what's really happening fundamentally, what drives the market, as opposed to here in America, we, we're uh, engulfed by politics and, and, and policy uh, nonsense. It kind of gets your psychology a little bit off kilter. So, you know, this will bring us back to focus, I think, once again. But the key is the guidance. And, and when they have the 
the you know the downgrades in the guidance for the future that's is sometimes a, a, an excuse for people to you know take their chips off the table uh, we've seen that time and time again but it, it's oftentimes temporary so what I like to focus on is look at things on a weekly basis uh, two weeks ago the stock market was down here in America it was down four percent nothing catastrophic last week it stabilized it was a bit positive uh, so let's see how we finish this, finish up this week uh, but I, I'm, I'm liking the pattern and I'm liking the performance out of the market the way it behaves it's important to see how it how it not only how it acts but how it reacts and the fact that it's reacted this way today after new lows and mm. looks like we're moving positive we could close positive that is a very bullish sign once okay. again let's not forget mm. we're in a nine-year bull market okay Alan uh, thank you for that and Colin what about from your perspective the next two days what what should our viewers be, be maybe bracing for maybe yeah. they should have been buying this morning I looked at it and I didn't do it what I'm really looking at now, uh, particularly from the industrial sector, is what's happening with the impact of tariffs. There has been, there was a somewhat of an impact on Caterpillar's guidance, but the one that really struck me this morning was Harley Davidson. Mm. They announced global sales down 8%. U.S. sales were down 13%. European sales that were hit in the summer bounced back, and they really got hit in the U.S. Ford has been complaining about the impact of steel tariffs and, and the other automakers. Okay. Harley Davidson's in the exact same boat as them, and you can see what happen to them. Tomorrow Ford reports, we'll see if that starts to hit the automakers in, in a meaningful way as well. And, and what has been going okay. on generally with uh, with big ticket consumer items, Whirlpool is about to report, they struggled last quarter, yeah. and uh, and we've seen the home builders just get absolutely crushed in, in the last few months. So something's going on with big ticket consumer items, and that's where got I'm it. really focusing the next couple days. Okay, gentlemen, we got to leave it there. Great to have both, both of you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank Colin Szynski, Chief Market Strategist at SIA Wealth Management, and also Alan Nuckman, the Chief Market Strategist at